turn up saturation a bit so we can see the color effect we're having here. So night's usually a little bit blue, so I'm going to go kind of a blue hue. Turn up the set. You don't want to go too insanely because then it's like pure blue. So go somewhere here. And colorize you can do too. Um, I usually leave it around there. And I usually leave the rest of these blank, only these two. And this color here um, doesn't really matter too much because you mess around with the hue here. Um, so it kind of overpowers whatever color you selected there. Uh, anyway, so let's close and then press OK. And now we can see we got much cooler night lighting here. And because uh, it's important to see your guy in, the, in cinematics, you want to uh, let's switch to the doodad layer and let's oops and let's place some uh, lights. You don't want your guy to be running in the dark. Oops, why is it still in this layer? Okay, doodads. Uh, search for light and light omni blue. Uh, large. You generally want to use large lights, so maybe a green one here. Actually, let's keep it consistent. Uh, it's kind of blown out there. I don't want to use that. That's a bit better. And uh, let's get some red lights in here to make it more spicy. Uh, if that's the right word for it. I'm um, just placing them sort of randomly in dark areas that need that could use some more interesting lighting. Let's place an orange one there. Okay, that's good enough for this purpose here. And I'm going to just save it. Uh, Cinematics tutorial one two, okay. Put my name on everything. Uh, anyways, so we got this. We've got pretty much the map ready to go now. So why don't we go ahead and make? Actually, before we do that, we should make the camera. So press C. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have the first camera. It's going to follow right up behind your guy here. And by the way, I just mouse wheeled and I just control right mouse to do, get to this angle. Uh, so I'm going to follow your guy a bit, and then when he reaches a certain point here, I'm going to do like an overhead camera, kind of following him. And then when he gets here, I'm going to do I'm going to do a, like a kind of a this view maybe. It's all about just trying out views, seeing if they work. The thing you don't want to do though is disorient your viewer. Um, so if you, for instance, if I'm doing this, I don't want to suddenly cut to uh, an angle like this down here because it's a 180 degree switch, which would be a uh, pretty disorienting if you're watching. So you want to you want to go from a view that the user's used to. So for instance, I st if I started my cinematic like this, the overhead view switch to an cutting to an overhead view like this isn't going to be too jarring and then cutting to something like this is going to be kind of predictable and normal hopefully. Uh I could be completely wrong here, but I'm just that's how my brain's working right now, so that's what I'm going to do. So first thing we're going to do is um get it, our camera into position. So like this, or maybe like this, and that's pretty close. So when you're kind of close to what you want, you press create camera, right click it and do not show it because it's in our way. And then modify properties, preview it and turn up the depth of field here to like 0.3. You can see it getting a bit blurry. And the way, the only way to see that is if you're under, uh, hold on, view, uh, if you under file uh, preferences, under video, make sure you're on ultra here and make sure post processing is on high. If it isn't, then you won't get the blur. And in game, you won't see the blur unless you have that on high as well. Or ultra, I think it's called in game. So back to modifying this camera. Preview is on. Uh, we got some depth of field. The depth is set to eight, and our distance, our distance to this green circle, which is on our hero nicely, or is pretty close to our hero, uh, is eight as well. So you want to generally keep these the same. And then this is like from that point how much do you how close do you want it to blur so if i set this to three you'll see it blurs out a lot earlier than before if i set this to 15 you'll see like no blur let's make it like uh, five so we can see a bit of distance but it's going to be blurred out and here let's change the pitch a bit let's not get too laggy because uh, if you show everything here it's going to be a bit laggy uh, so let's go about here maybe that's good you don't want to show too far and the far clip Far clip's really high in this map because um, it's showing the sky, but if you have this number, this number basically controls how far you can see. So you can see that's black here is because it's chopping everything off. Um, so if you have a laggy map, you could set the far clip to really low number like this, but then again, you get this black crappy stuff here. So you want to generally get rid of that. So let's get back to 20,000. It will lag, however, on a really big map. So that's why I made a small map and I'm using sort of the edge of the map 
uh, so I don't have a bunch of terrain being loaded in the background. Uh, so this is all good. Press OK. And then you need to press View again just to make sure it's good. So that's good. And now let's go make the second camera. So I'm going to press middle mouse down. Go here. Set this to like that. And uh, so what we're going to do is when he hits this point here, we're going to apply this camera. So create camera. And do not show it. So right when he hits here, we're going to apply the overhead camera. And then we're going to go to that, to this create camera and don't show um, and I hope this makes sense so camera one will follow him when he reaches this point we're gonna apply camera two and then we're gonna do a slow pan to camera three while he's slowly walking so we're not gonna follow him but we're gonna time it so it looks like it's following and then when he uh, I don't know we'll make another region here and when he hits this point we'll do some sort of other camera here so let's see maybe like this is good Let's create the camera, uh, don't show. And for this case, we don't want it to be blurred out so we can see the zerglings. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that. And uh, so let's make the region while we're, press R to go to regions and just drag it out there. Good. And press middle mouse. And then the other region we said was gonna be around like here probably. And I should probably rename them. So double click, oops, don't double click. F2 on that, and let's name this um, cam trig1, and let's name this one cam trig2. Okay, save, and so we got everything ready to go now, so now let's go to the trigger editor, uh, which is going to come soon, hopefully. There we go. Uh, so let's get rid of all this uh, default crap, and so right from the map initialization, Control W on actions. We're going to go to visibility and we're going to create a revealer. And we're going to create a visibility revealer for player one within uh, function the entire map. So you can see everywhere. And if you had more players, you do that for player two, for player whoever. Um, so, anyways, after that, another Control W here. And let's go to cinematics, cinematic mode. And let's turn cinematic mode on for all players over immediate. So it'll start right away. And then let's, okay, camera, apply camera object. Let's apply camera 001 for player one over zero seconds uh, with 100, because this is going to be happening right from the get-go. So we want to do this right away. Uh, no, no deceleration, etc. and include the target. So right from the map get-go, you'll be seeing this. And then after that, copy paste and then we're going to camera lock camera input for player one and then we're going to camera let's see uh, does cinematic mode actually lock it already um, it looks like it just turns off the UI I don't know uh, well anyways we're locking it to be safe and then we're going to follow a unit to uh, where's follow unit follow for player one and we need to do a conversion here so it's not following a unit group going to follow our unit. I just did a conversion and we're going to follow the specter. And I'm going to clear the current target, but if that doesn't work, we're going to change this to be uh, keep the current target. So we got that. Um, so we're pretty much good for the first camera here. Um, now, if you had more players, you'd obviously want to do this for all of them. So you'd have to copy paste here. Or you do it in a loop, which means I'm gonna I'm gonna actually show this because I know people will ask me how to do this. Um, pick each player in active players, so it'll get all the players that are in the game, and you put all these actions. Well, except for this one, this one already is for all players, um, and you could change you could change this to be active players too. Doesn't really matter. So you change this to be function uh, picked player. Change this to be function picked player and so on. You drag these into there too and do that as well. So it'll loop through and do this for all active players. But because I'm only, it's only me right here, um, I'm getting, I'm undoing all that. Okay. So we follow it and now we need to order the unit to move. Um, so we should actually go back here. 